All right. I think we're, we have about 25 attendees online. Um, and it's 8 a.m. here in the Los Angeles. So we're covering the globe today. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Um, so I'm going to introduce you guys to Jose Garcia, um, Software Development Director for Vaxtor. Uh, the gentleman that's in Madrid right now, and he's going to tell us about Vaxtor. Uh -huh. So, Jose, over to you guys. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and, and to have this opportunity to show you uh, what we do with Vaxtor and how we are working together with Network Optics to, to try to, to have the, the best solution that, that we can offer to, to our customers. Um, I will start with uh, a bit about Backstore. Uh, the presentation is a bit long, too much text, so I will not stop on, on, every, on every slice. Uh, please feel free to, to ask me if you have any question at any given time uh, and to interrupt me uh, if, if anything is not clear, okay? Uh, we are a small company. Uh, we uh, only do uh, video analytics. Okay, uh, we are very focused on, on doing video analytics and we have been doing LPR since 2016, more or less, okay? Uh, our first year, we focused a lot in developing a, the technology we are using right now. And from since two years ago or so, uh, it's when we have started to, to, to build and to, and to grow uh, from a product point of view. Okay, uh, we specialize on license plate recognition, uh, but also we have uh, container code recognition, uh, make model and color, and other analytics that are related to the to the traffic environment and to the OCR world. Okay, uh, we have a few uh, contract with uh, with uh, with manuf camera manufacturers to embed our solution inside their cameras. Uh, one of them is, is, is very public, is with the Axis cameras where we are selling worldwide the solution on all the continents, uh, Asia, Europe, uh, America, uh, Africa, NEMEA, and also on, on Australia. About Backstore, uh, we have four offices. Uh, we, we have an office in, in Spain, in Madrid, that uh, is where the development team is. We have an office in UK. Uh, we have also an office in Singapore where uh, Christine is, is based. And we also have a commercial office in USA, in California. Uh, we sell the solutions uh, in all the in, more, in the most important verticals related to the LPR. Okay, uh, we are selling for parking, but also for highway ticketing, for tooling, uh, and of course for the smart cities. That probably today is the is the most important vertical in LPR. Okay, uh, we have uh, one of the most advanced OCRs engines. Uh, here uh, I gives you the chance to test the product whenever you want. Uh, we offer free trials. We are pleased to work with integrator and, and with distributor to, to show solutions so you can test it, you can play with it, and check if, uh, if the solution will fulfill to your, your requirements, okay? We, we are pretty sure that, that uh, the product will, will be good for you. Uh, we also has uh, an additional software that is Elix. Elix is a web-based uh, system that allows to collect all the information related to the plates and uh, allow the users, or multiple users, to, to check the results, to get the statistics, to make sure you know, to, to, to exploit the information that they are gathering with the, with the readers. Um, we have a voice experience uh, operating in, in hard condition related to the hardware. We, we, we embed the system in all kind of device. Uh, and we are allowed to do this because the full development of the software is made by us. Okay, We don't use any kind of third party uh, software to create the solutions. Um, 
this is the the office I told you uh, and about technology okay uh, i think this is the most important part of the, of the presentation that is uh, we are very focused on create a fast accurate and flexible ocr engine okay uh, we have tested the system in fields with dozens and in dozens of deployments with recognition rates above 98 percent and these numbers are not provided by us are provided by the integrators and the distributor and the end user that use the system okay um, for example here in spain uh, our integrators use app plus the the, the audit uh, company to certificate that all the installations uh, are over 98 percent for urban control environment in Catalonia. Uh, while working with us here, and if you are used to use this technology, you will see that for access control, uh, most of the engine will work fine. We specialize in extreme condition, okay? Uh, when the light uh, is low, when there are shadows, when the plate is double exposed, damaged, uh, when the angles are not as good as it's sold because the we all the companies have a recommendation how you sold install the camera but of course the the real life <laughs> don't allow you to always do what you should be doing okay uh, when there is snow when there is rain this kind of uh, environments condition um, are uh, where our ocr works uh, better than than the majority okay and on the on the past year we have deployed over 20,000 lanes in over 30 different countries okay uh, and this is important because uh, allow, uh, using the technology in different countries has allowed us to create an ocr that is independent to the fund okay uh, and this is the key to work in certain countries like USA, okay, where the plates are a bit of a nightmare with droughts on it, with all kind of different uh, fonts without a definite grammar, and um, where really the OCR engines uh, need to be forced, okay. Um, we are used by some of the most important uh, laboratories in USA, okay, for OCR on containers okay um, this is an example of different place that that we are able to read okay regarding this font independent different uh, backgrounds all kind of DAOs, different fonts different colors okay and all recognizes correctly by the engine okay and of course uh, we support Arabic okay and this is very important for the Middle East uh, where we don't only read the Arabic plate, but also we are allowed to detect the category of the vehicle and the region, okay? Depending on, uh, for example, for Kuwait, uh, we are able to detect the, the, the big number, the small number that is around the plate, uh, and we report that independent to the plate number, okay? Hey, Jose. Yes. There's a question. Uh, do you guys support uh, the plates in Morocco? No, Morocco. Uh, we don't support. Uh, we don't support Morocco yet. Okay. We support the Latin part, but we don't inter and we don't read correctly yet the Arabic part. Okay. I had, a, I had another question as well uh, on a previous slide. If you go back two slides. Yeah. One more. Uh, one more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it says here that you have four optimized neural networks. Yeah. That you're able that you're using across a, a hundred countries. Um, so when you guys are doing the train uh, training, you're doing the training centrally, um, and then when you do on camera, is it still neural network based? Well, uh, the training and uh, the, we perform only one training for how how the products. Okay, all uh -huh. the products serve the same neural network that we use internally. Those neural networks are selected internally uh, depending on the countries that you set up on the system. Uh -huh. uh, and we have for third time hardware, not for all this hardware, but 
example, uh, there are some old cameras that doesn't has coprofessor, okay, mathematical coprofessor, uh, and we have a specific neural network for this kind of uh, of systems, okay, where of course we are not as accurate, uh, as good reading uh, as uh, uh, on cameras that has uh, copro mathematical coprofessor, okay, but you still can use the system. Okay, uh, but yeah, oh, I was all the curious. so yes. it's uh, um, I was just curious if you deployed the uh, trained, um, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the, the, the word for it right now. Uh, like once you've trained up the neural network, you now have uh, an inference engine, right? Um, and are you deploying that inference in engine directly into like axis cameras? Yeah, 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 we do. Okay. So, so it's very lightweight basically. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, also for make, model, and color, uh, we are using at this moment GPU, okay, for the okay. neural networks. Uh, those networks are, are more expensive from a compute point of view, okay? Yeah. Um, and are not allowed to be executed on the, on the cameras yet, okay? Uh, this will change in, in the future because uh, the cameras will become better. Some cameras are starting to, to have neural network related chipsets, okay? Uh, and we will use those in the future, okay? But for now, the make, model, and color uh, technology is only for PC at this moment. Okay? So it, it requires a GPU. Does it require any specific GPU? Well, uh, we, we are using NVIDIA. Uh, right. We work with, uh, I think it's the 1000. 60 and a half. Okay, so, yeah, so it's, okay. it's, it's not very, it's, we don't need something very powerful. So that means you could, you could work as well with like a, a Jetson platform, like a dev Yes, board? of course. Yes, yeah? yes. Okay. We, we have experience with the Jetson platform. We have a, already a, a working system on Jetson uh, and the new one, the Jetson number two. Uh, and we have used that for uh, embedded vehicles. Okay, well, we have used the, the Jetson inside the vehicles. Science, it is a kind of computer that is very easily to adapt on to, to, a, to a car, okay, and, and perform the reading there. Yeah, for those of you guys who are listening who aren't familiar with the Jetson platform from NVIDIA, you can just uh, search for NVIDIA Jetson, uh, and you'll end up on a page with uh, developer boards. Um, and these developer boards are basically created to help companies um, develop applications for the Jetson platform. And the Jetson platform is really about low powered uh, GPU and neural network stuff. So uh, that's why I'm talking to uh, Jose about it in case any of you guys out there uh, are, are a little bit confused. So, okay, that was my questions. Okay. Uh, let's go back. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, one thing that is very good on the Jetson also is that um, the, the transfer from the GPU memory to the main memory of the, of the board is, is very fast. So it allows things that is very hard to do on, on computer. Uh, and you will get better performance in this kind of chipset that on, on, a, on a PC for some application. It's, it's an interesting platform. Um, okay, for, as I told you, we, we support uh, Arabic characters, okay? And also we support Thailand characters, okay? Um, we are uh, focused at this moment on, on Middle East for the Arabic. Maroc Morocco is, is, is the typical country that uh, it is there. We need to perform a training with Morocco, but we don't have yet done that, okay? It is, it is on the roadmap, I, I suppose we will do this year, okay? Uh, about the products. We have the Bax LPR on computer, okay? This is the typical a standalone application that works on the Windows. We also have the, the Linux version, okay? That will connect to compatible streams. Uh, for the Windows version, we have set on beef compatible source. Uh, uh, we get the video from the, from the screen, analyze it, and report the results, okay? Um, it is also possible to uh, analyze videos that are stored on the computer. And we had the embedded solution, okay? The, the most famous one is the, is the one that we have with Axis. Uh, we have been working very hard with them for the last two years. We have over 3,000 licenses sold uh, at this moment from this product, okay? 
Uh, and we also had the back source here containers. Uh, again, we can run this on computer and also embed it on the Axis cameras. Uh, we have a very high accuracy on this product. We are able to read the containers both horizontal and vertical and in movement, okay? Uh, for, for reading in movement, we need the computer version, okay? It's not working yet on Axis, uh, but we are one of the very few companies that offer this kind of feature, okay? Uh, and we connect all this kind of data to the Elix 6 management solution, okay? The, this is the web application where you connect the different readers and allow you to uh, search for plates, uh, operate with up to authoring fields, open gates, uh, you know, uh, fight alarms, and get uh, blacklist alarm, uh, display the results, make exports, these kind of things, okay? Uh, Overstay, uh, fight an alarm if a vehicle is over 30 minutes in this area, uh, report an alarm if the vehicle goes in, 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 in the wrong directions, these kind of things. Okay. Uh, how we usually work? Uh, what the system does is uh, we send events from the different readers, okay, uh, in real time to the cloud platform or the platform installed on the customer, and you access this kind of platforms by whatever web browser you have, uh, tablet, uh, mobile, or computer. Uh, for example, if the camera lose communication in real time with the, with the cloud, the camera will hold the results uh, in an internal database and report all the place read uh, late, later when the, when the communication return. Okay. Uh, and I think that the best is to see the system. So let me open a browser to one of the camera that we have in the laboratory. Uh, usually I prefer doing this with real traffic cameras rather than looking to a, to a television, okay? But uh, you know, with COVID, uh, there is not much traffic in the streets. So uh, it's better to, to be sure that we will get some vehicles, okay? Uh, this is a camera we have in the laboratory uh, that is looking at the TV and we have the application installed here, okay? Uh, and this application, uh, runs directly on the camera and is capturing the, the plates. The vehicles on the video is, uh, this video is from Taiwan. They were moving around 60, 70 kilometers hour, more or less, okay? Uh, and here you can see the different uh, settings that we set up on the system, okay? Uh, I will not go into the details because there are manuals, the, the, there are uh, other videos where we explain this, okay? But what it is important is that everything is done in the camera, uh, everything is web-based, okay? So uh, you are not expected to install anything on your computer to set up the system. And uh, all, the, uh, all the configuration can be downloaded and uploaded late, later, okay, to restore a camera. There is a reporting area that is where we send the result to third parties, okay? And we focus a lot in doing our system uh, integrable by third parties, okay? Uh, we have integration with a lot of system, okay? And we support generic uh, outputs, okay? Like for example, JSON, where the user can define how he want to send the data to the to the third parties okay this is regarding the reader okay uh, let me show you elix uh, we have a system in azure uh, uh, that is connected to, to to a camera from some of our customer uh, at this moment we have i think two demos going one in usa with uh, in ohio uh, uh, Jan, yes, uh, video coming from any compatible source can be analyzed, okay? Uh, compatible source is an on beef source. Uh, H.264, MPG, you know, the, the, typical, uh, the typical source, okay? Uh, so, the, mm, so, Alex, 
Uh, at this moment, we have uh, one camera in UK. Uh, this is, uh, I think, this, this is also an Axis camera. It's a Q70 uh, that is getting two lanes on the on the entrance to a sales center. Okay. Here we have a Tibet uh, Make Model and Color Recognition. Okay. Uh, you can see the. Okay. For example, this one Audi i6. Uh, this one is from USA. Okay, it is not the same camera. We have the make model and color only for the, let me show the camera name, sorry. Okay, only for the camera from Ranger, okay? The one in the USA is not, is not has not the make model and color enabled, okay? Uh, but here, as you can see, today there has been not many results, just 2,000. Uh, usually this place has around, 10,000 reads daily, okay? So <laughs> you can see that uh, the coronavirus is, 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 making, is making damage on, on, on the amount of traffic, okay? Uh, but the important thing is we can make search by plane number, by country, by camera, by area, make model, uh, time frame. If the plate has any, generate any kind of alarms, uh, wrong direction, blacklist, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Uh, we also use Celix um, as an access control system. Okay. So you can trigger barriers, uh, generate wait lists, authorization, these kind of things. Again, I will not go into the detail in the demo. Okay. But there are manuals. Uh, this demo is available for from anyone on the on the web, okay? So, so I can provide you a user and password. So, so you test the system and see the different features, okay? And if you are interested, uh, we can provide you a user for uh, one of your customers, configure a camera from your customer and upload the results so he can check the system, okay? Um, so, okay. Let me go to the presentation. Okay, so this is the typical installation that we do now. And now I think that the, the interesting part. Okay, but we are talking all the time about video. Uh, and none of the products that I have shown you are video related. We analyze, we generate metadata, we get frames, we make reports, but the video disappear when we are talking about the backstore product. Uh, we don't work with, we don't store video, okay? So there is a natural, uh, natural uh, union with uh, optics uh, for the video because we are, we are allowed to, meta, to tag these metadata uh, in the video that is already uh, stored by optics, okay? This allow us to complete the solution and to, and to generate a global solution for the customers, okay? Uh, this can be used in building, in trans, in highway, in safety, in smart city, all these kind of projects that need the video, okay? And that the video is an important part of the solution. And one thing that is really, really important, nor NX nor Backstore will search for the integration, okay? It is one of the policies that we have in Backstore is that we don't charge to the integrator or to the end user for integrating our product in his product, okay? So this when is- When you say that, yes? just to be clear, Jose, you mean one, like the, the enabling the integration between the two systems? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not, not, gener not creating a new integration. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm talking about that, but also about creating new integration uh, we usually not don't charge by that, okay? Of course, it depends on the business model, etc. okay? But we are flexible on these kind of things, okay? So we usually, mm, it is hard that we that we need to charge, okay? For, for this kind of thing is there is a business model on, on, and there are uh, opportunities in the market. It is something we are up to do, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, we understand that at the end, we are a developer of a very basic solution. And that our solution has sense when you integrate with others, not as a standalone. So it is part of the business, okay? Uh, and of course, we ensure that this integration will keep working in the future, 
okay? Once we start working with a company, we kept working with that company, okay? So uh, don't expect that the system stop working when you grade the system. Uh, we want that the system kept grading and we kept growing, okay? Um, how we are integrated uh, with uh, with an X, okay? Uh, at this moment, we are integrating all the readers, okay? Doesn't matter if it's on computer, it's on PC, it's, on, it's embedded, it's LPR, it's container, everything works, okay? And it's sending the event by the REST API for, to the NX server. This is important because all the products from Optics that has this API will be allowed to get the events, okay? Uh, by the end of this quarter, um, we will also be sending the authorized and not authorized event, the blacklist, the overspeed, run direction, timing area, and ADR detection events from Elix. Okay, these events uh, are not performed by the reader; uh, are performed by the by the management uh, system. Okay, uh, the list is is in the is in Elix uh, to ch to check if a vehicle has exceeded uh, the time in an area. You need to communicate to cameras. So these are more complex events that we are integrating in the in the future. Okay, in the, in the, by the end of this quarter. So right now. Mm -hmm. uh, backstore, whether you're on PC or whether it's a camera, like you guys say, the, the front there, mm -hmm. all the events that are coming into a, a powered by NX system, whether it's NX Witness or one of our partner solutions, is coming in as a REST API call, so an HTTP or HTTP, HTTPS yes, uh, event. Yes. And then once you guys have that event in the system, you can then filter that event and create rules for that event. Uh, for what what the uh, VMS is going to do based off of that event. So uh, you mentioned uh, after that you're going to uh, add additional functionality like whitelisting, blacklisting. Um, and we talked about it, I think, before the event, but, but basically the, the, the metadata SDK enables a lot of that functionality with custom events and actions, custom rules in the rules engine. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, uh, bounding boxes and coordinates for the individual object that's detected um, and then storing the metadata generated by that analytic event in the uh, in our database, so that you can kind of instantly search uh, up to a year's worth worth of video, like in less than a second, for metadata in specific pixels. So that's something you guys are planning on doing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's something we are up to do. Okay, uh, we want to finish uh, this first integration. Uh, start working with it because I'm sure that. Uh, most of the integrations when we launch to the market uh, gets a lot of new functionality in the in the next six months because it's when the end user and when the customer start to you know thinking on these creative uh, in, uh, ways to work with the solution that we didn't thought about okay so this is the first step that is completely operative and, and it is working but uh, it is not the end of the road Okay, uh, yeah. the metadata API, uh, AP, uh, sorry, metadata SDK, it is one of the next steps. All right. Yeah, okay. One of the things we do, I mean, just for everybody out there, is it, when things are integrated with the metadata SDK, um, we, we think about all the things that, what you just said, Jose, every single customer uses this slightly differently, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so one of, the, one, of the, one of the reasons we did the metadata SDK was, we standardize the experience for how it feels to have like a, a neural network driven and a video analytic in the system generating metadata, right? And events. So we standardize the way that people um, use those third party plugins um, because this way it's the same user experience no matter which, which uh, analytic you're using. Um, but we also give our analytics partners the ability to go in and create custom configurations, custom events, um, custom actions um, that you guys can really then take and extend the functionality of your platform uh, via that SDK um, so that it allows the users to have kind of more special rules that they can do with each different uh, engine out there. So it, you know, it, it's interesting just because you said you wanted to, you know, different customers use it different ways. We kind of take the opposite approach, which is that every customer needs metadata. Every customer needs to know where the objects were 
at particular parts uh, of the video archive and even on different parts of the view, right? Um, and given that people mainly want to use, um, or one of the most common things people do with IP video systems is event review, right? Mm -hmm. So something happened, I need to go find this thing. Well, we implemented the, the search kind of side of it the exact same way as we do with our smart motion search so that it's, you know, you just draw uh, where you want to see a specific thing that happened in a specific view and the timeline uh, mm -hmm. will show you almost instantly where the metadata that you're looking for lives in the archive. So yeah. just an interesting, uh, it's an interesting time because of the proliferation of analytics like Vaxtor, um, each one is fundamentally the same, but at the same time, also fundamentally different because they're using different technologies to build these solutions and they have different customer bases. So, yeah. all right. Okay. Uh, Christine, later, later on in, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll show some, some study case, okay, that we have already working and that show the power of, the, of this kind of integration and, and how the, like on this kind of, uh, on, on all this kind of, uh, of, of uh, integration, uh, when two products works together, it is not one by one, uh, one plus one is, is two, it's one plus one is three, really. Okay, because you add a lot of more power to the to the system that the zoom of both systems. Okay, so uh, I think that the best is to see it also. Yeah. Okay, so I have the Jose. The just before you begin the demo, one question did come in from oh. Taryn. Said, uh, will the whitelist blacklist functions allow integration into databases such as NCIC or local law enforcement databases like? Okay. Yeah, uh, we have, a, and I think has been this week, uh, a request to integrate the blacklist from, from some government database in the USA, okay? So yes, we are working on that, okay? Uh, at this moment, we have already import systems, okay? So you can import a CCB file and this kind of, uh, you know, structured files. But uh, we are doing some very specific integration with some government database, yes. All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, so um, about 10x, okay? Uh, where we have uh, uh, the, the same camera that, that you saw before that is connected to the system and we are receiving the events in real time, okay? Uh, you can see it is, it is coming directly on the camera to configure the system. It is really easy, okay? You just need to enable the reporting network optics, okay? You select the server what you want to send the data. It, it works both HTTPS or HTTP, okay? Depending on the server. You set the username and password. Select the source that will be used to, to filter on the on the server select what description and what caption do you want to send to the server and this is fully configurable by the user okay uh, at this moment we are sending as the caption the plate and the date and as description only the date but you can add the country you can add uh, only the hour only the minute whatever the make model and color whatever data the analytic is able to provide you okay and so, you, those, those, are, those are short codes that you're using there, right? Yeah, yeah. This uh, this is fully documented on our manuals. Okay, then there, there is a a full list of what kind of templates we are allowed to use. Okay. Okay, so you call them uh, templates or like a, so like the dollar sign plate dollar sign. What would yeah. that be? You call that a template? Yeah. Or a yeah. placeholder? Yeah. This is the reserved word. Okay. The template is the is the word is the word phrase. Okay. Uh, so, for example, dollar plate dollar, it is replaced by the plate number that we have read. If, if we go to the NX, you, we can see that the caption is the plate number and also the date, okay? And the date is, in this case, is initial format, okay? We also have the local date, you know, the, 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 the typical uh, representations from the, from the fields, okay? Right. Uh, does selection the config require a TF? No, no. Uh, at, the, uh, at this moment, I'm doing the demo with systems that are connected to internet, okay? But it is not mandatory. Uh, everything can work offline, okay? Uh, 
Uh, of course, you need communication between the camera and Elix if you want to send the results, but that communication doesn't need to be active 100% of the time. It is perfectly possible that the communication goes down. Uh, the same goes for the optic server. All the reportings are stored locally in the camera, okay? So if the communication is shut down, when the communication returns, the camera will send the data correctly to the server and with the timestamp correctly uh, when the plate was read, okay? So that is uh, handled by our system. So, so you guys will... And uh, you so Jose, you guys will queue events while uh, while it's not connecting to uh, NX. Yeah. So you get a you get an unsuccessful uh, yes. you get a response from the service as not successful on the request, yes. and then you guys. So with every single one of your events that's coming in, you've put in the timestamp at the end. Yes. On the on yes. the API call, is that right? Okay. Yes. Uh, the, the, we have a local database on the on the camera. When you set up the system, you generate you can generate a database and read the notification. If this is enabled uh, and the notification was not sent correctly, the system will keep trying to send this notification until okay. it is successful. So you, okay? if you have that, if you had that mode checked, then it will do what what you just described. It will continue to, yeah. to, to send it. Okay. Okay. And also, if you enable this, we we also has a low coverage mode. This is a new mode we have made on the product in the last versions that is specifically designed to work with unreliable communications, okay? I'm thinking on uh, urban deployment with 4G technology or 3G technology, okay? Uh, where you might have times, uh, for example, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., where the amount of vehicles and the metadata generate is bigger than the bandwidth that you have, okay? So the camera allowed to, to work in a different way and optimize the resource, okay? And not saturate the bandwidth and to work in a more, uh, uh, let's say that send the data slowly, okay? But make sure that all the data arrives to the server, okay? So we have a lot of uh, experience in deployment in, for urban environments, okay? And sadly, one of the worst part of working in urban environment is that the communication is not always as good as it's sold, okay? So, so our products are adapted to this kind of environments. Um, okay, and for the reporting, the last option that, that you need to set up is the camera ID, okay? That this is the ID that you have on, on the camera settings, okay? That you can copy from here. And that allow to link the event to the camera itself, okay? And that is, uh, the integration will take like two minutes to configure, okay? And once you have that done, uh, what you will do is to, sorry, not here, uh, to generate the rules. Okay, in this case, when a generic event from LPR is arriving, we are creating a bookmark in the camera. Okay, so if we go to the bookmarks, we can see the, all the data uh, that we, we have been storing. I, I, I think I put the video around 12 a.m., so it has been running for uh, five hours. Okay, and of course, you can make search by plane number, whatever you have put on the templates. Okay, any questions? Okay, I continue. Uh, so now, Christine, uh, if you want to continue from here uh, about the study case that she has been involved in this, in this project personally, so I'm sure that she will make a better presentation than myself, uh, Christine. Hi guys, hi, uh, Christine here. So um, please allow me just to share quickly two past projects which we already done together with uh, Naval Optics in Asia Pacific region. So all those projects actually was uh, before all the current integration have been done. So um, that's the reason why after this particular integration, I'm sure we will have a more common vertical we can work with. I want to highlight to you is that two distinct 
vertical, you can play with uh, Vaxxer solution and also NX solution. One of them basically is a C port. So as what you can see, this is a one of the project we already done, which is uh, in Cambodia, um, one of the most, the largest uh, so-called deep sea port. But this concept can be um, so-called, this concept has become more and more popular, at least in Asia Pacific perspective. Because myself, I'm staying in Singapore. So in Southeast Asia, for example, Thailand, I know some of the uh, audience, uh, so-called attendees are come from Thailand. Thailand, Malaysia, um, including Singapore, Philippines. So all those countries, they are interested in similar solution. The solution basically is able to integrate both license plate container ID all together and the backup with uh, network optics, the so-called the video recording. Why is that so? Because uh, there are a very strong needs in a lot of uh, container owner or the seaport operator. They are always facing the problem, which is a container owner is try to claim from the seaport operator that my container has been damaged by this particular uh, seaport operation for whatever reason. So that's the reason why they tend to claim from the CPO operator some of the insurance uh, uh, high, um, high uh, claim among, yeah. So in order to prevent the CPO operator from uh, losing those kind of uh, uh, insurance uh, claim, they basically need to provide the evidence that whenever those container come into the CPO, B, it come from the so-called the main entrance gate or B, it come from the so-called the crane side to be offload from the vessel itself. There must be a evidence to show to the insurance company that the original container has been damaged before they have been loaded into the seaport facility. Okay, this is a very, very, very important function, which is uh, together with the uh, NX and the Vexer, we are able to, to achieve this. And the, the total solution is able to help end users save a lot of money. So that's the reason why they are willing to pay on this. Okay. So if you want to know more detail, um, Vexer has a, a one set of a dedicated CPOP solution. You can reach out to me later. I will flash my contact email. Uh, Jose, would you mind just to help me to Yes. Uh, uh, Christine, just a question. How many how many cameras were in that port project? For that port project, actually, it's not a lot because uh, that was the first phase. Right now, actually, we are working with uh, the system integrator for the second phase, and uh, they are also exploring for another port. Because for uh, Vector side, we are mainly focused on the ALPR and the container ID. So those are the, some of the key position. But just with some of the key position, is able to create a very unique solution uh, to together with an X system. So I was just, I was just curious yeah. uh, how many how many actual cameras at the port were in use. I mean, you're talking okay, 10. typically for one entrance, typically for one entrance. Um, Typically, the configuration is that we, we need two ARPR camera. One is uh, for the container truck for the front license plate, and the, yep. another one is uh, for the real license plate because typically they are not the same. And on top of that, because uh, for Baxter's uh, container ID camera, we have the capability to take up the container from uh, the real, uh, real wheel, which is a back door, top view, set view. Okay, so typically we will propose three different views. The reason is because um, due to the different C port, they are having different, they are, they, they are capable to bring different size of container. For mm -hmm. example, they can bring in two times 20 feet that kind of container or one times 40 feet that kind of uh, size of container. So that's the reason why the design, the location of your container ID camera is very important. So that's the reason why typically for one entrance, we are having at least three uh, container ID camera plus two ARPR camera. That's for one entrance link. So for okay. one C port itself, typically they are having, depend on the size of C port, 
uh, it's uh, ranging from a 10, 10 links to even larger pops, yeah. those kind of arrangement. So okay. on all, the maximum perhaps is like, a, you know, about 50 channels just for ARPR and the content ID. Right, but with 50 cameras uh, for that port, now they're able to, to know every single vehicle that came and went and every single container that came and went, and they have an associated video for every single one of them, right? Exactly. And imagine uh, one container, typically um, the claim value on a very is like, like a 500, uh, 100 K US dollar that range, because typically they are based on the container goods itself. So the right. container goods itself is able to justify the entire solution investment. So, so that's um, the reason why, yeah. Go yeah, there's a, there's a good, there's a question that came in that's related to this though. I mean, how's the, uh, how's the pricing for um, Vaxor work? Is it, is it uh, per camera? Or is per it per, per camera, base? yeah. It's a per camera base. Okay, it's per camera. Mm -hmm. So you calculate it on the total number of cameras. Okay. Correct, yeah. But it's a, a perpetual license, so which means uh, uh, we don't have so-called recurring charge you know, for the subscription fee, so on and so forth, something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll ask more questions on the how to buy, on the, on the how to buy slide. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second case study I want to flash. Okay. This is of in Vietnam. Um, po Chon Group actually is one of the world's largest uh, sports shoe OEM, ODM provider. And basically they are providing uh, basically, the OEM their sports shoes to um, worst top, you know, nine out of ten top brands. Whatever you are wearing right now, probably are all you know manufactured by them. So they do have a very large uh, factory coverage in Southeast Asia. So right now we are mainly focused on their Vietnam factory. So at this moment, pretty much all their Vietnam factory are all done by both. Uh, NX and also Baxter, okay? So um, in this particular project, basically the system, the, our distributor, they have a, developed a very special system. They are using uh, license plate recognition uh, to as uh, an access control and to combine with a normal access card. So it's like a dual uh, verification method. Why they want to do something like this? The reason is because um, in Vietnam, basically, there are a lot of cases in the factory, motorcycle will be stolen. All right? Because in Vietnam, uh, everybody pretty much has uh, at least one or two motorcycle, but car is, uh, is, is not as, uh, that popular as motorcycle, especially for factory worker. So they had a tremendous of uh, motorcycle being stolen, that kind of case. So that's the reason why by combining both license plate and also the employee card, access card, is, is able to perfectly address this, this problem. And uh, for this particular project right now, there's uh, no integration between NX and the VEX LPR. But after our current integration uh, phase, um, I'm going to suggest this particular customer to do the upgrade. If they are going to do the upgrade, then in that case, they have the capability to search any so-called being stolen motorcycle from an NX platform. And uh, not only the license plate number will be retrieved, it will be include who was a driver, who was the person who drive out that particular motorcycle. Then in that case, the whole solution is much more meaningful because it's not only identified uh, the so-called uh, uh, stolen case is also uh, record who who is the person who steal the motorcycle. Okay, so I think this is a very one of the uh, useful case study just to share with you. But this one is considered pretty simple, fundamental um, for the end user. Okay, we we achieve 97 percent of uh, accuracy rate, but for this particular project, the camera. Um, the customer use basically is uh, it's like a very, very cheap, very, very cheap, um, that kind of camera. It's like right. an entry range, light range. Yeah. So with that kind of a camera, um, we are still managed to achieve 97%. Um, after we've done a couple of localization for the so-called Vietnam license plate. 
So, so far, that's the reason why end user was very happy with the performance. And uh, after we done one project, um, our partner naturally get the rest of branch for this particular key account. Okay. Was, um, was this uh, the PC side? This is the PC version because uh, they were using a very cheap version yeah. of uh, yeah, yeah. camera. Yeah. So um, how many um, like on the PC side though, how many, like what's the requirements in terms of the number of channels you can do um, uh, like of, of license plate recognition with like, you mentioned earlier, like you need like a, a, a NVIDIA like 1060, let's say for like a, for license plate recognition. How many different camera streams can I do with that one NVIDIA 1060? Okay, the, the okay. media is, is only for the MM. Okay, you go on, Christine. Uh, yeah. the, the media is only for the MMC. Okay, for the make, model, and color. Uh -huh. For LPR, we don't need. Uh, oh, okay. It can be a computer. Okay, we have a table uh, that that allows you to 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 decide what kind of computer you need to buy depending on the amount of of LPRs. Okay. So your uh, your LPR stuff is all CPU based. No yes. GPU required, right? We, right? we have a GPU version for the LPR yeah. also, okay? But it has sense when you are working on very high resolution, over 4 megapixels, okay? Uh -huh. If you are working on a smaller resolution, really you don't... The, the, moving the, the data to the GPU doesn't trade off with the analytic time. Okay. How okay. many, how many uh, pixels do you need to recognize the license plate? Our comfort size is between 20 and 30 pixels on the height of the character. 20, 20 to 30 per half of a character. And yes, 20 to so, 30 pixels for the height of the character. We so usually... Sorry, height. sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Height, okay. okay we so usually work with the height because, you know, it, that is standard for all the plates uh, all around the world. So it is, it is more easy to, to have only one number. Okay, and then the angle of incident, is there like a like a, a certain angle you have to have on the plate? Like well, uh, we recommend angles that are smaller than 30 degrees, okay? okay. Uh, if it is possible. Uh, we have some crazy installations where the angles are bigger, uh, but uh, at the end that makes that the results are worse, okay? So, so 30 so. degrees and, and 30 pixels. Right, that's okay. easy to remember. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you guys um, planned it. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, for the one question that, that we have here uh, regarding the on camera version, uh, you need to you you buy the firmware, well the software uh, from Backstore or one of the distributors, okay, and the camera from Axis. They don't come together, but there are some distributors that I offer this as a service. For example, Anixter. Uh, we have made project with Anixter mm -hmm. and the distributor has uh, made the installation of the software and the configuration, you know, the basic configuration of the system. Okay. Yeah, but the, 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 I think Alexis asked the question about the, the on-camera version. Yeah. So, so, so Anixter will preload it into the camera and then send it to you, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, At the end, this is, a, this is a service that they offer. Right. They, so they add it as a service on the quote if you're buying it from, like, from Anixter. Yeah. Um, but for someone who has an access camera in, in their facility, right? So I have an access, let's say I have an access camera in my uh, mm -hmm. office. And I want to, in my parking garage, and I want to just add license plate to it. Mm -hmm. And I should be able to download your application from the uh, ACAP, the Access Partner uh, portal. You just, you just need to buy the, uh, the application that you can buy from Backstore directly off or from one of the distributors that we have. Uh, you just download the application from a web page. It is publicly yeah. available, uh, backstore.com, and you install it. Okay. Uh, if you don't have license, you will get a free 30 days trial that you can redeem. Uh, and if you have license, you just install the license and the system is running on the camera. That is. All right. So basically you just use the built-in access interface to upload the, yeah. the application once you've got it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Alexis, there's your, there's your answer. <laughs> okay. There's another question and I'm not sure what this question is from Hanifa Kosani. <laughs> can we use magnetic loop? 
I don't, yes, I don't... yes, we can do. Okay, and the magnetic loop is is the is the wires that you install on the ground to detect the the the, the vehicle. Okay, uh, ah, all that system. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Nowadays we don't use that so much. Okay, because really it is not needed. And you remove one point of failure that is the the loop itself. Okay, uh, but yes, if it is needed, we can work with the magnetic loop. Okay. Uh, you can connect this directly to the camera, to the EO ports of the camera, and also uh, you can connect this to the computer if it is needed. Okay, and okay. in this case, we work in signal mode rather than free flow, and we only read when the signal arrives. All right. Now we can let okay. Christine go back to the <laughs> case studies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before, uh, maybe before I go to the key information, which is how to bypass, uh, can I just do uh, on one particular application, uh, which I think is pretty interesting to a lot of the audience. The reason is because just now Jose mentioned in Q2, we are going to do the integration with uh, uh, Baxter's uh, backend software Helix, right? So, um, this software actually, it means you open up a lot of a new application for your, especially if you are doing, for example, smart city project, safe city project. Okay. Um, something like, for example, we do have standard features like a red light violation and also over speed violation, uh, wrong direction violation, and also um, illegal parking, those kind of uh, case. So all those are part of the standard feature of Helix. And if you are focused on smart city, smart traffic, that kind of vertical, please pay attention of the second phase of integration, or you can just uh, reach out to me and I will so-called send some of the useful demo video. We have a lot of uh, project deployment, especially in Asia Pacific, uh, my region. So if you are interested in one particular vertical kind of a use case, let me know what you are looking for. I will send you the um, demo video just to give you the quick idea. Okay. So <laughs> let me come back to the main point, which is how to buy. How to buy is uh, me. Okay. My email, <laughs> christine.goadvestor. Um, the alternative email in case, in case, for whatever reason, the previous email is not available uh, for future. Okay, then you can write to info at asia at All right. Um, we do cover, okay, like just now, not, uh, Jose mentioned one of the slides. Uh, Vexter basically is able to support quite a wide number of uh, license plate format in terms of country or region. Uh, it's around 191 country region, uh, which is a, we are fully supported at this moment. So please do check with me uh, whether your country has been supported. We do have a, a standard list to let you know. Um, if uh, you have, uh, uh, you are interested to find out who are the distributor in each individual region, uh, you also can contact me. So basically I'm the one at this moment, okay? So any other question, guys? Hopefully I can address you. Um, I saw one question, which is from Joseph uh, for the, so basically you are asking, do you mandatory require Helix to integrate with NX or Vexter on cam can directly connect with NX? The answer is Vexter on cam can directly connect with NX. And also the Vexter PC version also can directly connect with NX, all right? Okay, so any other yeah. Q&A? Do you offer demos for the CPU-based version? Yes. Yes, we have a 30 days demo also. And that's, uh, can you just download the software from your uh, website or do you have to like- No, uh, you, you need to contact product? us, okay? Oh, okay. The, the only uh, thing that we don't support is to run in the demo in a virtual machine. It is possible to run the licensed product on a virtual machine, but not the demo. Not the demo in a virtual machine. Yeah, that's the only handicap that has the that has the demo version. Okay, other than that, is fully operational. Okay, 
uh, I think it's up to four strings at the same time. Four strings at the same time for the demo no. for 30 days. No. Yeah. Sounds like ours. Sounds like our demo version as well. You get free uh, four channels for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning to integrate the solution in other cameras other than Axis? Uh, yes, uh, we have already done. Okay, uh, but uh, we cannot speak about that. Okay, but yes, there are other manufacturers that use our engine internally. I have a question. Are you guys looking at like the um, what is it called OSST or C SAST? Uh, so, sorry, repeat me that. From Bosch? Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, from Bosch SAST, the SAST stuff, the, the, the camera application. I don't know if you guys have ever interacted with those guys. I guess a better question for you is a, what, where do you see, um, where do you see Vaxtor in the future in the next, let's say two years? Um, where, what are you guys really focused on in terms of like, well, this is going to happen next. So we need to do this. Um, uh, we, we have, uh, other analytics that we are developing at this moment. Okay. It, it is the, um, we have, we want to focus on analytics. Okay. So, uh, OCR and LPR will be the main one for the next few years. The, 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 the provisions for the LPR market and, and OCR analytics is, is wonderful. Okay, uh, this moment is one of the most needed analytic. Uh, but we have other running at this moment, like model, make model and color and, and other ones that, that we are developing at this moment and that hope we can put some of them on the market for the next year. Okay. Yeah, so the make, model, and color, um, is, that, that, is that integrated with us as well right now? Yes, 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 yes. That is working at this moment. If you use, for example, the, the PC solution, make, model, mm -hmm. and color is one of the tags that we can send to, to NX. Okay. So do you, do you see the analytics? You say you guys are going to stay focused on analytics. Do you see the analytics being more centralized, like with the um, GPUs and... Kind of bigger machines or do you think that it's going to be uh, more important to be in the camera well uh, in my opinion and, and you know this is this is hard to say because some analytics have a lot of sense to be done on the device directly okay like lpr lpr is yeah. the typical analytic that have sense to have there because uh, you may want to have the metadata to operate internally on a small number of devices that are there in field. And if it is possible to send to a centralized server, perfect. If it is not, well, okay, uh, doesn't matter too much. But there are there are other analytics that doesn't have so much sense to have central uh, in the in the device. For example, make model and color. It is one analytic that. At this moment, it's, it's, it's really not needed in the device itself. So uh, I think that it all depends when you say on... you it's not needed in the device itself, though, right? Uh, what, yeah. when, what, what do you mean by that? Like, is it I like mean it's... that it is not so important to have the make, model, and color in field at the moment that the vehicle is there. You so, you, you say, so it's not transactional data. Yeah. Yeah, you don't gonna be you, you don't gonna do anything with that data in the like camera it's not, itself. A, it's not a it's not a it's not a credential. It's not an identifying piece of information. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is, but it isn't, right? Because, like a red Ford Focus, there's many red Ford Focuses, right? Yeah, so, yeah, it's not so important. I can't let you, so I can't let you in my facility, right, or my secure area, just hmm. by saying, "Oh, you were driving a red Ford Focus, so you're allowed in." I need to have yeah. some form of identifying information, like your license plate, right? Yeah, yeah. and that's what, yeah. You, that's what you mean. So it's like, yeah, not it's not transactional enough. Yeah, yeah, that's that what I mean okay so there are some data that of course it will be nice to to have on the device uh, one important thing about doing everything on the device is that you uh, remove the needs of, com of big communication because you don't need to send the video outside okay uh, but sometimes you are already sending the video because you are recording so you know uh, but, uh, I suppose you're also that reducing latency potentially right yeah yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, communication, also the communication gets better and better at time. Okay, so we are moving to a, to an environment where 
the communications will be uh, uh, will be there. So having everything on the on the device is very nice. It, it is something that uh, we are focusing. Okay, because we are already developing uh, this software for three main manufacturers of the cameras, uh, and we will keep support in this area, okay? But uh, we don't need to lose the focus on the computer because the computer will be there also, okay? So there are things that, that has sense to, to have on the camera, but not everything. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. I'm kind of the same thing. I say that if something gets you uh, gets um, useful enough that it's almost universally required, then it makes perfect sense to be on the camera, right? Whereas if something is something is more of an advanced feature that has more con kind of complexity to it in the way that it's used and the way that it works, then it's going to remain a, a server side technology, right? Um, but I liked your idea about the transactional nature of of uh, license plates. That makes a lot of sense. Basically, anything identifying will have to be taken, can be taking place on the camera, um, and anything that's um, more advanced, kind of behavioral or or more holistic, like make, model, uh, and mm -hmm. type of car, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that makes more sense. Um, there's a question from Eric. It says, "Are you planning to?" Oh, we already answered that one. Uh, no, yeah. Pedestrian information was the question. He said, uh, are you planning to have more than just LPR on the camera? Are you thinking about developing pedestrian based information as well? At this moment, no, there, there are no plans to, to go outside from the LPR uh, on, the, on, the, on the cameras itself. Uh, we might do some new products on, on the future, okay? But, but at this moment, our focus is on OCR technology, okay? So, recognition of a kind of, uh, of pedestrian information, amount of people passing, this kind of thing is, is not on our, on our roadmap at this moment. I have a different question. We have a customer who um, does safety uh, docking solutions for um, logistics centers. And they're looking for a solution that will allow them to kind of be mounted a camera on a forklift. And then mm -hmm. as the forklift picks up a box, it wants to be able to read a barcode or a QR code of some time and be able to track that box throughout the facility. Mm -hmm. Is that something you guys we have, are working on? We have done that for containers on ports. Containers. We have we have put the cameras on the cranes of the on the cranes on the on the uh -huh. uh, to to read the, the container when the when the crane pick up the the box. So it's a contain your container product would basically cover the same use case. Yeah, yeah. So the container okay. product it looks at does it, it reads different types of barcodes and and, and no and it, well the, the container use the, the the standard ISO okay for containers I, I don't remember the number but the there is a standard for that um, we can make uh, let's say custom double custom uh, development or custom uh, yes uh, the, the oh, jose you're kind of breaking up there um maybe just let me to uh, address this thing um yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because uh, 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 <laughs> that contain character <laughs> that a user needs to read, okay? But this is that made is a... Uh, he's back. So... And he's off again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me just to address this thing because uh, I did receive similar requests in my region. Okay. Uh -huh. The answer is that for Vector OCR engine to recognize... Hello. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, 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 I think it's job. So yep. for o Baxter OCR engine to recognize a barcode, okay, for each barcode itself, if you look at the barcode closely, uh, on top of the, at the bottom of the barcode itself, actually there are a series of numbers. Right. Okay, so basically to uh, Vexus OCR engine, as long as there's number, there's character, for us, it's all feasible. Okay. Yeah, the so you don't read the barcode, you just look at the you look at the smaller text underneath it. Exactly. Right? We look at the smaller number. 
So, so anything the, that's the object only... based, anything that's character based is something that you guys can probably yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, you are totally right. So that's an OCR technology. So basically for our uh, so-called the ALPR engine, the behind the engine itself, it can be so-called modified a little bit in terms of different format to um, just to read the barcodes format so that we can instantly twist into a different version of product, something like that. Makes sense. Mm. Um, sorry, it looks oh, like no my, inter- uh, my, my connection went down. Sorry for yeah, that. We saw it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Christine answered for you. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Thank you me. so much. I just sent me for you. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, well, go ahead. Right uh, it's your stage. <laughs> it is uh, after midnight in Singapore, um, and it's after 6 p.m. in, in uh, Madrid, right? Um, and it's 9.15 in the morning here in LA. Um, our tip, our webinars typically aim to go for about an hour, um, but uh, we got time for one more question if anybody's got one. So I'll leave this uh, up for one minute. And then uh, if, no, if there are no further questions, um, like always, this webinar has been recorded um, and will be available on our YouTube channel, Network Optics. Um, so... If you want to review the webinar um, or you want to share it with someone, then that will be available uh, soon. We're also going to have a new works of the next webinar uh, or sorry, a webinar um, section of my.nevergraphics.com where, where all these webinars are going to be put up with the presentations um, from the partners and contact information for each partner. So that'll be coming later this week. Um, so I don't see any more questions that came in. Well, then I will um, go ahead and end the webinar. And so first, I want to say thank you to Christine and Jose for jumping on um, and giving us a, a more detailed introduction to uh, Backstore uh, and your LPR and OCR uh, uh, and uh, make, model, and color uh, recognition engines. Um, Robert says, Jose, my family is from, I can't pronounce that. You can pronounce it. Uh, uh, Barcelona and <laughs> their prayers are with the people of Spain. Yeah, everybody out there, please stay safe uh, during this COVID uh, crisis. It's definitely an interesting time. Um, make sure to wash your hands and wear masks, you know. Um, yeah. And yeah. thank you guys. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, Christine. Um, uh, if you guys, any of you guys out there have questions, um, the contact information will be on the presentation and you can reach out to these guys. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having us. Yeah, have a good evening, guys. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Definitely for me. Okay, thanks, guys. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.